Hey, I'm Sean Spire, and I'm going to show you nutritionally as well as your workout programming how I've helped hundreds of people build muscle and burn fat. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did with all of them that you can utilize on your own. So we got a couple case studies to start off the day um, right here. So this is our in-body from the gym. As you can see, skeletal muscle mass right here, percentage of body fats right here. Um, this is a male who did personal training, and they lost 2.9% body fat. That is 13.8% of their initial body fat in the first four weeks. They gained 2.6 pounds of muscle, which is 3.19 of their initial muscle mass in the first four weeks alone. Second case study is a female. She did CrossFit with us, and within those classes, we were able to get her down 2% and up 1.5% of muscle mass in just those first four weeks. And finally, a male here, 30 years old, did CrossFit with us, down 2.1% body fat in the first four weeks and up 0.9 pounds. So you guys can take a look at that one. Um, the mo number one thing that I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell you how to break down each of these right now and how to do it for yourself, but you need to figure out what kind of program is best for you. I believe that everybody should be following a program. That is how you're going to get the best results. It could be with a coach, like a personal trainer. It could be following a coach or your own program design that you made yourself, or you could be doing a class like CrossFit. But no matter what it is, the best program is the one that you adhere to that you follow the most and you try the hardest at. So you need to kind of figure out what's best for you. Individualized programming is great for highly motivated people, but it's challenging if you're not actually gonna do it. So the most important thing is doing it, whether that's needing a personal trainer there with you, whether it's being able to do it in your garage or at a local gym by yourself, or whether you need the class and community atmosphere or that push like I do personally and take classes. That's what I like the most. So let's dive into it. This is how you program individually for yourself. So if we want to, first of all, build muscle, that's what we're talking about right now. We want to focus on volume, time under tension, and short rest intervals. I like about 8 to 15 uh, reps with about 60 to 90 seconds in between, and usually I'll do this for about 3 to 5 rounds per movement. So I also like supersets. These could be paired with the same muscle group or opposing muscle groups. Mixing it up and adding that next step, that variation is very important. So the next one is variance. Each week I like to think about four things and I'm gonna vary one to two of these factors. It's either gonna be exercise selection, load, volume, or tempo. And then each week we vary one or two of those things in order to create that variance that the muscle really likes. So here's just an example of it. Number one, uh, week one, we had a back squat four times 15 at 135, controlled eccentric, that's the way down, explosive concentric, that's the way up, resting 60 to 90 seconds. So in the second week, I've now modified two things, exercise selection, so I went to a front squat. We also looked at volume, I changed as well, up to 15 reps, everything else stayed the same, so I changed two of those variables. Example number two, we'll go to a back squat again, exact same rep scheme and tempo and everything that we had on the previous week, but then week two, I did not change the back squat, so the exercise selection is the same, but we have 15 reps instead of 12, so the volume has increased, and the load has increased up to 145. So oftentimes when I write programs for people, I don't really write 12 or 15 reps, I actually write ranges. You know, it could be 12 to 16, 8 to 12, 6 to 10. You know, I'm going to do different ranges because I want to make sure the work, the, the work being done is challenging. So if I say 6 to 10 reps and someone gets 11, I actually want to increase the weight because I want them to be in that interval with good form. So somewhere in that rep range. If they only do 5 reps and I wanted 6 to 10, then I want them to reduce the weight in order to be in whatever range I give them. Usually for muscle growth, it's that 8 to 15 range. I want to aim for 100 reps of training volume per workout and really emphasize muscular tension. This is one of the main things I don't love about CrossFit, and I love CrossFit. It's one of, I own one, but we don't think about muscle tension at all. We tend to just do the movements, but not really think about how we're doing the movements or what muscles we're using during the movements. I like to conclude my workouts. Now we're getting to the fat burning kind of area of it with some sort of interval set. So this high intensity interval training at the end of the workout is usually going to be one to three movements and it's going to be either an AMRAP, as many rounds as possible, a timed workout, so four time, rounds for time, or a interval. And that's going to be a one to one, one to two, or maybe a two to one work to rest ratio. So that's work to rest 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off would be a one to one, for example. I also like Tabatas a lot. That's 20 seconds of hard work with 10 seconds of Rest. So I like to conclude my workout. It's usually going to be about 8 to 15 minutes uh, in that time frame. 
And don't overcomplicate this. Like I said, stick to the rep ranges we talked about. Pick about five to eight different movements. Aim for about 100 total reps of the muscle group, not the movement. So if I do 50 squats, I might need 50 lunges. So 100 total reps. Stick to the rep schemes and rest schemes that we talked about and then add that conditioning at the end. Now, how do we do this within a CrossFit workout? So whether it's my gym or whether it's somewhere else, we're not picking the workout. So how can we modify the workouts in order to accomplish this goal? And in order to do that, I think we can do this. This is what's worked really well for me. And that's using lighter loads to maximize the work given in the time frame. You should be towards the top of that leaderboard every day. And that's not with bad form. That's with great form and great technique. But we are modifying the movements and or the loads in order to accomplish that. So the reps should be able to be done at least eight in a row. So pick a load that you can do at least eight, but not really exceed 15 in a row because we want to, once again, stick to that eight to 15 range. So it's a lighter load. We're not in a strength phase where we're only able to do one or two or three reps at a time, then take rest. You should be able to do about eight reps every single time with the load, move on to that next exercise or take a little break and then right back to that same movement. So really think about that. And then lastly, prioritize that muscle recruitment. What muscles should you be working? That's what you need to think about while you are in that Metcon or that workout in general. All right, now let's dive into your nutrition. What do you need to do nutritionally in order to accomplish these goals? So once you hit that link and you'll go to your nutrition navigator, it's going to look like this. So the main thing, and there's another video for here for you guys to watch, um, but what you'll do is you'll put the date, you'll put your body composition goal. So you, um, let's say you want to lose body fat. Let's go large deficit to do, go do it faster. Um, I want a body composition goal. Let's say I'm 34 years old. I'm 180 pounds, my activity level. My, I'm pretty active, but most people I like to put in the sedentary category so I can get quicker results for them. And most people don't move as much as they think. I think they kind of overemphasize that. So as we get into calories a day, it's going to give me my estimated calories a day, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs, how many grams of fat I need, and this is the percentage of my day. So if we go over here to these portion sizes, um, I like to have people not weigh their food because it gets really hard to figure out on a daily basis. So here's how we do it instead. I like to use my hand. So two palms. So one palm is right here. Two palms is about 200 grams. One palm, about 100 grams. So I like to use that as well. Estimate 150 by a palm and a half. Um, we have a fist. All right, it's going to be about 180 grams of something, um, an entire fist. Um, the front of your fist is going to be just kind of this portion right here. That's 50 calories or 50 grams. I'm sorry. And then your thumb, you know, is about 14 grams right here. That's a good way to measure fat, for example, because that's in very, very small portions. So I've calculated this. I've done all this. Um, it's going to give me my meal divisions. You can change this, but this is kind of what I recommend and what I do with people. So put your information in there and then you go to your meal plan. All right, so now that we're on our meal plan, I'm going to create meals for myself. And what I do for clients is I'm going to create a meal, and then I'm going to create – sometimes I'll do, I do all five days in a week. Some days I create like three days and have them replicate it. Some days I do seven, but usually I give them about five days in a week. And then because that's, for most people, something that they can replicate and keep doing. Um, so I'm going to go in and create a meal plan for them. So for someone that tells me you know, they like eggs in the morning – then, uh, so I'm going to go eggs and then my hand size. So my goals are all in here. These are my goals that I should hit and my calories to go while I build this out. Here's my total for the day up here. So my hand size, you know, for a guy like me, I'm going to actually say two palms and it's going to tell me how many calories that is and my portion size by just estimating on my hand. So uh, my carbs are, I like fruit, for example, berries um, for that breakfast item. Let's just say mixed berries. And let's go fist. All right. So I'm at 388. I only have 33 calories to go. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and, you know, for this person, you know, breakfast time, I'm actually just going to increase the berries and just do eggs and berries, make it really, really simple. Um, and we're going to go here. We're going to go here. And I'm actually going to call it a day at that. That's 388. That's really close to where they need to be. And I'm just going to keep it there. So I'm going to go through all their snacks all their lunches, all their dinners, and build out the perfect day playing around with it. And that's one day. I'll go ahead and repeat that process for multiple days and give them different variations. You know, for example, a lunchtime, we'll go through it. We'll hit our meat, um, chicken breast. Um, I like to go with the cooked ones, but you could do it raw as well. 
for a guy like me. I'm going to do two palms again, and now I'm at 330 total for my day. I want 421 for that meal, so I'm going to have just a little bit of carbohydrates. And I'm going to actually go through the whole thing, um, trial and error, trying to figure out what's the best meals for me, trying to get as close to this daily goal number as I can, and modify that as needed. So that's what that's going to look like nutritionally. I'm going to have them repeat that throughout the week. Could be different, could be very similar, but for the most people, the more you do similar days, the better because we are a creature of habit and we do like to eat the same stuff all the time. That's what I'm going to do nutritionally for them. And then lifestyle report card, this is the first one I like to think about. And if we break in our week into seven days, it's really important to think about our life as a percentage. Four out of seven is where most people that I run into live. They actually eat pretty well Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But the problem is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they don't. They eat out, they hang out with friends, or they just go off their Monday through Thursday kind of routine all the time. And that's 57%. That's a gradual regression, and you are not going to get results. In fact, it only takes 96 extra calories a day to gain 10 pounds in a year. I don't think most people are terrible with their food or exercise. I think they just kind of live here, and I want them to change, and they just need a little bit in order to change that. Now, 71%, that's maintenance mode. That's where once you get to where you want to be, you can live here. This is Monday through Friday being good, or in my case, I like this kind of Sunday through Thursday uh, because Friday and Saturday, I personally like to go out to eat on Friday night oftentimes and Saturday as well. So I like to get back on track Sunday and then do that the rest of the week till Thursday and I repeat. So Five out of seven good days every week, you know, doing your nutrition, exercising, all of those things are maintenance mode, fantastic, um, but you're not really going to progress at all. That's the reality. If you want to progress, you need to be in a gradual progression of that six to seven days a week. That's that 85%, and it's the sweet spot for progress. That is one day a week cheating and doing whatever you want, not necessarily exercising, not necessarily sticking to your food plan. Stick to it as much as you can. Um but six out of seven is where I want most people to be. I do want them to cheat because that will make them stay on this progression and it won't make them burnt out of it. And then seven, through, seven out of seven is a perfect number. It's 100%, but it's not sustainable. It's not enjoyable and you're not going to do it for that long. So I do not recommend it unless you have a wedding in three weeks that you want to look incredible at. But then after that wedding, I want you to go back to that six out of seven until you get to that amazing place of maintenance. So in summary, pick what kind of best exercise is going to be best for you. The best program is the one that you stick to. Don't forget that. Shoot for moderate volume and feel the tension of that muscle while you're training. Make sure you eat enough protein. Don't overeat, but don't undereat either. And aim for that 85% lifestyle. That's what's going to bring you the best results. So guys, that's it. That's how I've helped hundreds of people with their nutrition and their exercise selection as well as training in order to get them to burn fat and build muscle. Um, go ahead, use all these principles on your own. And if you need anything, any of my help, um, just let me know. And I'd love to see how I can best help you.